Dr. Sage here. In today's video, we're going to cover a survey of major antimicrobial drug groups. By the end of this video, you should be able to distinguish between broad spectrum and narrow spectrum antimicrobials and explain the significance of the distinction. Trace the development of penicillin antimicrobials and identify which microbes they are effective against. Describe the action of beta lactamases and explain their importance in drug resistance. List examples of beta lactam antibiotics. Describe common cell wall antibiotics that are not in the beta-lactam class of drugs. Identify the targets of several antibiotics that inhibit protein synthesis. Identify the cellular targets of quinones and provide two examples of these drugs. Name two drugs that target cellular membrane. Describe the unique methods used to treat biofilm infections. Name the four main categories of antifungal agents and provide one example of each. List four antiprotozoal drugs and three anti-hemolith drugs. Describe two major modes of action of antiviral drugs. Broad spectrum drugs are effective against more than one group of bacteria. For example, tetracyclines. Narrow spectrum drugs only target a specific group. Examples, penicillins. So penicillins can be attained naturally or synthesized in the laboratory. They consist of three parts, a thiosolidine ring, a beta-lactam ring, and a variable side chain, which distinguishes between the different types of penicillins. For example, what you might have heard of before, like ampicillin or amoxicillin. Some example penicillins. Penicillins G and V are the most important natural forms used to treat gram-positive cosci and some gram-negative bacteria. Ampicillin or amoxicillin have broad spectra of action, are semi-synthetic, and used against gram-negative enteric rods. Methicillin is useful in treating infections caused by some penicillinase producing bacteria, which are enzymes capable of destroying the beta-lactam ring of penicillin. Clavulinic acid inhibits beta-lactamase enzymes. It's added to penicillins to increase their effectiveness in the presence of penicillinase producing bacteria. We also have antimicrobial drugs targeting the cell wall, cephalosporins and others. Cephalosporins were isolated in the 1940s they have a beta-lactam ring that can be synthetically altered, so they have a similar mode of action to the penicillins. Other drugs that target the cell wall include bactericin, isinozid, and vancomycin. Here's some example cephalophorins, and you can see we've gone through several generations of them, each one helping us with a different aspect. For example, the fifth generation is used against MRSA, which you might have heard of before, which stands for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. We have carbapeniums, some of which are powerful but potentially toxic, so they're reserved for use when other drugs are not effective. Others have very narrow spectrum, so they're used to treat gram-negative aerobic bacilli, which cause pneumonia, septicemia, and urinary tract infections. They're effective for those allergic to penicillin. We have miscellaneous drugs that target the cell wall, Bactricin, narrow spectrum, used to combat superficial skin infections caused by streptococci and staphylococci. This is the main ingredient in neosporin. Isonazid, used to treat mycobacterium tuberculosis, but only against growing cells, is used in combination with other drugs in an active tuberculosis. Vancomycin, has a narrow spectrum of action, used to treat staphylococcal infections in cases of penicillin and methicillin resistance, or in patients with an allergy to penicillin. Phosphomycin, trimethylamine, is a phosphoric acid agent and is effective as an alternative treatment for urinary tract infections caused by enteric bacteria. We have antibacterial drugs targeting protein synthesis. The aminoglycoside drugs are composed of one or more amino sugars in a six carbon ring. They're the products of actinomyces, for example, streptomyces or micromonospora. They have broad antimicrobial spectrum. So the major sites of inhibition on the bacterial ribosome and major antibiotics that act on these sites include chlorophenicol, which binds to the 50S large subunit of the ribosome. It prevents peptide bond formation and stops protein synthesis. Aminoglycosides bind to the 30S small subunit. It impairs proofreading, resulting in production of faulty proteins. And tetracyclines, which bind to the 30S ribosomal subunit. They block the binding of tRNAs, thereby inhibiting protein synthesis. So again, the aminoglycosides insert on sites of the small 30S subunit and cause a misreading of mRNA leading to abnormal proteins. 
These are broad spectrum, used to treat infections caused by gram-negative rods, certain gram-positive bacteria, and they're used to treat the bubonic plague and tuberculosis. Tetracyclines are natural parent compound and synthetic derivatives. They have broad spectrum effects. They bind to ribosomes and block protein synthesis. They do have side effects, including gastrointestinal disruption and tooth discoloration. So the tetracyclines block the attachment of tRNA on the A acceptor site and stop further protein synthesis. They're effective against gram-positive and gram-negative rods and cosci, aerobic and anaerobic bacteria, microplasmas, and spirocetes. Glycosylenes are a newer derivative of tetracyclines. They block the 30S ribosomal subunit. They're effective against bacteria that become resistant to the tetracyclines. More drugs that target protein synthesis include erythromycin and telerythromycin. So erythromycin is broad spectrum and low toxicity. It blocks protein synthesis by attaching to the ribosome. Telelithromycin is used in respiratory tract infections suspected to be caused by antibiotic resistant microbes. However, it can cause serious liver damage in some patients. The macrolides inhibit translocation of the subunit during translation, for example, erythromycin. They're relatively broad spectrum, semi-synthetic, used in treating ear, respiratory, and skin infections, as well as mycobacterium infections in the AIDS patients. Finally, we have miscellaneous drugs that target protein synthesis. Clindamycin is broad-spectrum antibiotic used to treat penicillin-resistant staphylococci, serious anaerobic infections of the stomach, and intestines unresponsive to other antibiotics. Synersid is a combined antibiotic from the streptogramin group of drugs affected against staphylococcus and enterococcus species they cause enterocarditis and surgical infections, including resistant strains. Linzolid is a synthetic drug. It inhibits the initiation of protein synthesis and used to treat antibiotic-resistant organisms such as MRSA and VRE. There are also antimicrobial drugs that target folic acid synthesis. These are sulfonamides or sulfa drugs. These are the first modern antimicrobial drugs. Synthetic do not originate for bacteria or fungi. Some examples include sulfamethoxidyl, which is used to treat things such as acute urinary tract infections or certain protozoan infections. Sulfur sulfadiazine, which is used to treat burns and eye infections. Trimethylprim, which inhibits the enzymatic step immediately preceding the step inhibited by the sulfonamines. These two are often given in conjunction because of the synergetic effect. It's used to treat pneumocytis in AIDS patients. There are antimicrobial drugs targeting DNA or RNA. For example, fluoroquinones, they have high potency, they're broad spectrum, they're readily absorbed by the intestine, but they do have side effects such as seizures and other brain disorders. Some examples, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, and trovofloxacin. Rifapin is limited in spectrum because it cannot pass through the cell envelope of many gram-negative bacilli. Mainly used to treat infections caused by gram-positive rods and cosci, and a few gram-negative bacteria. It's used to treat leprosy and tuberculosis. There are antimicrobial drugs targeting the cell membranes, Polymycins are derived from Bacillus polymyca. They have narrow spectrum peptide antibiotics with a unique fatty acid component that contributes to their detergent activity. However, they're toxic to the kidney. We also have Daptomycin, made by Streptomyces. So these drugs interact with the membrane phospholipids, distort the cell surface, and cause leakage of protein and nitrogen bases, particularly in gram-negative bacteria. In regards to antibiotic and biofilms, Biofilms are a thousand times less sensitive to the same antimicrobials that work against them when they're free living. Different phenotypes are expressed by biofilm bacteria. So treatment of biofilms includes interrupting quorum sensing pathways, daptomycin, and pretreatment. We can also have fungal infections. Fungi are eukaryotes which present special problems for antimicrobial treatment. Most antibacterial drugs act on bacteria and are ineffective against fungi. Similarities between fungi and human cells means that drugs toxic to fungi are also capable of harming human tissues. The four major groups currently in use include the polyenes, azoles, econocannidins, and alloamines. So the polyenes disrupt the membrane of the fungi. The azoles interfere with sterile synthesis in the fungi. The econocannidins inhibit the cell wall synthesis. And the alloamines inhibit synthesis. We also have antiprotozoal and antihemolithic treatments. For example, antimalarial drugs, quinidine, 
was the principal treatment for hundreds of years. It's been replaced by chloroquine, which is less toxic to humans. Treatment of other protozoan infections include metronidazole, which is an amoebicide, and antihemolytic drug therapy includes things such as ivermycin. We also have antiviral agents, which have three major modes of actions, barring penetration of the virus into the host cell, blocking the replication, transcription, and translation of viral molecules, and preventing maturation of viral particles. For example, acyclovir is a structural analog of guanosine. It is specifically activated by the viral enzyme thymine kinase, and then preferentially binds to viral DNA polymerase, leading to a chain termination during DNA replication. We also have antiretroviral therapy, which is typically used for treatment of HIV. The targets of the drug classes currently in use include targeting the conversion of viral RNA to DNA, integrating the DNA into the genome, targeting the viral specific proteins, and targeting proteins that allow the virus to enter into the host cell. This has been your survey of the major antimicrobial drug groups. Until next time, this has been Dr. Sage.